Of all the pageantry, history, and tradition associated with college football, there is none greater than Ohio State and Michigan on any of those levels. Welcome to Buckeye Football Weekly alongside head coach Jim Tressel. I'm Jeff Hogan, and coach, congratulations. You were part of history with this team. You enjoyed the pageantry and your Big Ten champions and five straight over Michigan. Oh, it was a great day. Great day for those 28 seniors. A great day for the fact that a little bit of history was written and, and get another Big Ten ring. That's a lot of fun. It is, and uh, you know, it's a day that starts with a lot of emotion. As your seniors come out, Todd Beckman, the first one through there in the yeah, tunnel of pride. I tell you what, he, he's a special guy, and, and the fact that he went in through a touchdown was awesome. And this whole group, Ryan Robisky coming through here, those guys did a great job leading. Malcolm Jenkins, he didn't want it to end. He wanted to go slow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, James Laurinaitis, look, he, he, wanted, he wanted to talk to everybody. And, and uh, then Tyson Gentry was the last guy through, and, and uh, no one has taught us more lessons than Tyson Gentry. Well, these guys have stuck together. They played for each other. They made that fact known that they wanted to do that, and they really did. 28 in all. Your seniors go out there. I know Ike Kelly was honorary captain. Well, it was neat uh, going out there, and Ike, you know, had played on one of those teams that had a chance to beat Michigan mm -hmm. for a fifth time, and he talked to our guys about the fact that he didn't get that done, and, and uh, he did a great job speaking with them here early on. We hit a nice first down uh, conversion, then unfortunately made a mistake throwing the ball uh, into a rolled up corner and and uh, you know it's not a not a good way to start an Ohio State Michigan game but boy did our defense come after it. Well he returned it to the 13 yard line there and uh, you know quick change defense you got to have it and you got it. Sure did here they are snapping from the 18 getting hit as they throw incomplete and now they're kicking a field goal that will be spotted clear back on the 25 and and uh, our guys put a little bit of pressure and and uh, he didn't kick it through. Yeah, the early jitters, and uh, this one misses wide left, so the defense stands up where you think you, you, you know, hope for a three and out and a field goal. The field goal is no good, and that maybe provided a little momentum. Well, it was great, and unfortunately, we didn't uh, take over and move the ball, but we punted it, and we came up with the big fumble recovery by Marcus Freeman there, and, and uh, you know, turnovers are the name of the game, special units are the name of the game, and that was awesome. Yeah, certainly specials uh, played a big part in this in field position as well. Back on offense goes Michigan here. Uh, nothing doing for uh, that running back. Thaddeus Gibson getting after it. I thought our kids played hard. I thought Michigan's kids played extremely hard. Here's Dexter Laramore and Cameron Hayward coming through to smother uh, the young Sheridan boy from Michigan. And, and our defense was playing hard, giving us great field position. Well, on the 41-yard line, Beanie Wells, and you know what? His career has been huge against Michigan. He does it again. You know, I, someone said he's the all-time leading rusher for an Ohio State back against the University of Michigan. And if that indeed is the case, that's something very, very special. We tacked on 59 there, went well over 100 for the game. So uh, I'm not going to argue with that one. As we go to second quarter action here, Terrell Pryor is going to take off for a pickup of eight yards. A little quarterback draw there. And, and uh, Terrell, for his first Ohio State-Michigan game, got a lot of great experiences. Here he's stepping up and found the first down throw to Jake Ballard. And, and he, he had good poise. He had the early mistake, but I thought he came back and really handled the rest of the game very well. Nine-yard pickup there. And then on second and 11 from the 47, he opts deep and finds Brian Hartline. Big-time play. And, you know, they were playing so aggressive against the run. And, uh, you know, it was awesome to see uh, Terrell find him and, and uh, step up there and make the big play. And, and uh, that little number nine for them, Martavius Odoms, is a good football player. He's going to be a dangerous guy at Michigan for the next three years. And, and uh, he made some good plays against us, but we had that relentless pressure and Marcus Freeman in there and Cameron Hayward and James Laurinaitis. And here we are, and they, they got a little third down conversion there and they're moving the ball a little bit here at the end of the second quarter. And they got a little bit of, they got a little bit of momentum going with uh, their zone package. And uh, they figured us out a little bit from a formation standpoint, but uh, you know, our guys keep playing and, and uh, they made them earn their way in the end zone this particular trip, that's for sure. Well, it started first and goal with a one, and before it's over, it's uh, third and seven, and then it's fourth and one. I mean, this is a great goal line stand here. It didn't end up to be one that uh, was, was seen all the way through, but Malcolm Jenkins and Kurt yeah. Coleman right there. Our guys keep playing. Our defense plays relentless, and, and uh, you know, they ended up getting into the end zone and made it a 14-7 to seven game, and, and uh, believe me, uh, you know, the final score was what it was. But this was a tough football game. Well, certainly at 14-7 while you're going to break there. How do you flip the switch from the emotions of senior day and then go play the most physical sport there is? Well, you know, I was a little worried about that as the week went because you could see how 
emotionally draining it was for our our young guys and especially our seniors. And last night we had uh, uh, Friday night we had a little video uh, that uh, their parents did for them of those 28 guys and and uh, that drained a lot of emotion out of the place you can imagine. And and so I was a little concerned, you know, but uh, they love to play the game and they love playing for each other and. Uh, once we got it rolling, we got it rolling. I heard that kind of came out of left field when the parents stepped in and uh, had messages for them yeah. on video the night before. I mean, can't, can't imagine. Pretty special, and uh, it really helped a lot of the younger players understand that, uh, you know, this is an important day. All right, halftime, 14-7. We're back with second-half highlights right after this.